I'm E.G. Marshall. Most of us laugh off the existence of witches today or ever, particularly today. Yet, even so casual a research source as a daily newspaper would provide us with knowledge that there are covens all over the country and the world, and that witchcraft is on the rise again. Of course, all of them, in their minds, are dedicated to good works, as the following tale will illustrate. It does seem terrible to refuse the sister witch's check, but we don't deal with banks, you see. Very wise, Mrs. Warlock. And fortunately, you and your husband can manufacture the elixir by yourselves. <laughs> Except the main ingredient, Dr. Kalios. Of course. That cannot be made. Uh, we hope by tomorrow to find a new source. A pity. I'm in the wrong of medical specialty to help. Well... It was a most fruitful and rewarding service. I'm sure we all feel cleansed. And may Asmodeus shower his grace upon you, and Satan be with you. I pronounce this coven disbanded until it reconvenes the next witch's Sabbath, two weeks from this night. Our mystery drama, The Witch's Almanac, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Virginia Payne and Robert Dryden. I have in my hand a curious little book called The Witch's Almanac. I'm looking at a page which contains a recipe for a witch's broth. Rendered eye of newt, pressed gall of goat, extract of lizard's liver, garnish with fur of bat and minced tail of a poisoned rat, boil in alcohol, and lace with the blood of one virgin. Ludicrous or horrifying? The date of the book is 17th century, but witches still live, believe it or not. And are busy casting spells. Well, that's the last of them. Mm, and just on time. Oh, it's the witching hour. <laughs> Here you are. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. And all is silence. Twelve midnight on the nose. What are you up to? Oh, so, just... Checking over tonight's sales while I wait for the kettle to boil. <laughs> we gotta have our own special toddy before we go to bed. Oh, I'd have made that. I always do. All right, lovey. I got to get a particularly good night's sleep tonight. Why, hon? It's gonna be a real busy day tomorrow. Oh. Now we've got most of the supplies in, I've got to start on a brand new batch of the elixir first thing tomorrow. At least get to preparing the mash. <laughs> He didn't land off his business tonight. Pretty near cleaned us out. <laughs> Was it that good? No, we're going to be able to do to meet the demand. Only one that's troubled me is that Connecticut crowd. They're real backsliders. Oh, who needs them? We get more and more from Staten Island and New Jersey. Oh, it's the bat fur, Mother. Connecticut's our best source for it. Hmm. I sometimes think I'm not a very good witch. You know, I've never really seen a bat that I remember. Yeah. I've often wondered if we couldn't substitute mice, but I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. We got a good receipt. Don't make any changes. I learned that from my mother. Yeah, well, maybe so. She was a fine witch in her own right. I'm proud of her and her heritage. Yeah, no more than I am of yours. Yeah, there's the kettle. You get the toddy made. I need a good rest. A lot of work tomorrow. I sure hope we find a nice young boarder. Read me the ad again, darling. Mm -hmm. uh, elderly couple in choice location, Brooklyn Heights, wishes to replace last boarder who is like a daughter. Oh, yes. Desire a nice young girl of quiet habits and religious persuasion. Denomination, no object. <laughs> Lovely sunny room, full kitchen privileges, right, box 13, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, here's your toddy. Oh. Which of the answers did you like best? I don't know. It's hard to tell. We'll find out tomorrow. It's a pity we just can't come right out and ask the question directly. 
I just hope we don't make another awful mistake the way we did with the Godfrey girl. I'd have sworn that she was as untouched as a oh, lily. Not only untouched, but what she finally have? Quadruplets, wasn't it? Well, triplets, actually. One of them died before it was born. <laughs> Jason? Jason? What? Oh. Land's sakes, what a racket. It's Sunday. It won't bother the neighbors. I waited till they got off the church or mass. Oh, don't say words like that in front of me. You know I don't like that kind of language. Oh, I'm sorry. Just slipped out. Well, that's what they call it. The way other people talk and think is their way of life. It doesn't affect us. Except in the business way, of course. That's what brought me out to the forge. It's about time for the, uh, um, you know what, to be arriving. Yeah, well, I'll just finish off this andine here and be right with you. Did you start up the still? There's no point till we get the blood. But the mass is all ready for it to be added. Suppose we don't find the right girl. No, we'll find her sooner or later. Ah, uh, why don't you get on back and maybe start some weeding out? You're the one with the eye for them. <laughs> and I got to finish these here hand irons. And then I got two sets of fire tools and a weather vane I got to get out. And the stable needs some new horseshoes. Yeah. Uh, jangle the old bell there three times. If you think you have a live one, I'll come right over. You know I like to have you with me. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. At least give me till after midday mass. <gasps> uh, I mean, till the midday services are over and I'll be over by one. Ah, looks like the first of our hoped for maidens has arrived. Won't you just come right in, my dear? I'm Mrs. Warlock. And I'm Kathy Pryor. I hope I'm not late. Oh, no. As you can hear, right on time. One o'clock, as we agreed on the phone. What a lovely old clock. But doesn't it stop striking? Well, it's very old. It was left to me by my father. How strange. It has 24 numbers instead of just 12. Just like the army. The, the army? Well, my father was a captain. He died in Vietnam. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was at the beginning of the war, I mean. Oh, now I see. One o'clock is 1,300 hours, like Dad would say, just like your clock. Yes. For 1 p.m., it strikes 13. How unusual. Come now, I'll show you the room. It's upstairs. And as we go, you must tell me about yourself. You're very young. Yes, I guess so. 18. Not so young these days, but... Uh, uh, but? Well, after Father was killed, Mother was... Well, she wasn't very well, so since I was the only child, I had to take care of her until she died recently. I've lived a kind of sheltered life. It's uh, that door over there. Here in the city? Oh, no, I'm from a little town in Ohio. You wouldn't even know the name of it. Um, do you uh, have more family? No, I'm the last of the priors. Oh, how lovely. And the sun streaming in the window. <laughs> All chintz. Dotted Swiss curtains. A big four-poster bed, just like home. There, there, Kathy. Uh, I'm just going to call you that. Maybe you found a new home here. Oh, I just love all of it. I just... Well, what does your husband do? He's a forger. A what? <laughs> I'm, I'm just teasing you. Although he really is, that's the name for it. Here, come to the window. You see our other building in the backyard? Yes, with the, with the smoke coming out of the chimney? Oh, it won't bother you. We have a fan that blows it off toward the river and away from the house. That's Jason Smithy. He's an iron worker. And still, occasionally, a blacksmith. How fascinating. Ah, oh, there, there's my husband, Jason, coming now. Tell you what, dear, you look about, and I'll go down and bring him up to meet you. Pretty as a picture, and I'm certain quite perfect for our purpose. You sure she's a virgin? Well, I can tell you one thing. None of the others were. You could tell that at a glance. That's why I didn't ring the bell. Let's hope 
This one does. Uh, ring the bell, I mean. <laughs> of course, by tonight, I can tell for sure when I get a blood sample. Uh, any more coming? No, no, this was the last. Oh, honey bee, weren't we lucky. Mm. You see, Satan smiles on us. Uh, come on, let's go upstairs and see if we can't seal the pact. Oh, no, Mr. and Mrs. Warlock. I do love it here. Especially being able to see a little of the water in the bridge. But... But what, my dear? Well, I... I'm sort of embarrassed. You see, I had no idea how expensive New York would be. Or how hard it would be to find a job. I have so little money left now. And you've been so sweet. I just hate to take advantage of you. Because the way things are, I'm not even sure I can afford to stay a whole month. What sort of work do you do, Miss Pryor? Well, back home. Because I couldn't leave Mama alone too much, you see. I did part-time work for Mr. Jeffrey at his hardware store. See, we lived right over it. A lot of the typing and bookkeeping I could do at home with Mama. You can type and keep books? Oh, yes. Oh. Take dictation and file. You know, anything a secretary has to do. Hmm. I took a secretarial course after I finished high school. Land sakes, if you aren't the one... Uh, didn't give you much chance to see much of the boys, did it? No, but that's all right. I'm not ready to be married yet, and I wouldn't want to date too much till I am. Boys today take, well, a lot too much for granted. And I don't know how to, I don't know how to handle that. I, Godfrey, if I had a daughter, I'd want, uh, no, sir, we're not going to let you get away from us. Tell you what, make your proposition. You be my secretary, straighten out my accounts for a half a day in exchange for room and board here. The rest of the days you can spend looking for a job in New York. Oh, Mr. Warlock, that's too much. I, I couldn't. Oh, of course you could, Kathy, dear. We want you to. I only want one promise from you in return. What's that? That till you find that, that Mr. Wright, you keep on making this your home. Oh, you're wonderful. Of course I want to, but... No, 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 that's the end of buts. You're going to come with me. We'll drive over to New York to your hotel, pick up your stuff, and by the time we get back, Mother here will have a good home-cooked meal that'll not only melt in your mouth, but tell you better than any words, you found a new home. Since we had coffee after dinner. I just can't keep my eyes open. Now, now, what you need is a good night's sleep. Good night now, dear. And sweet dreams. Good night, both of you. Your absolute loves. And I know I'm going to sleep like the dead. Well... Is she asleep yet? I just peeped in. She's asleep, but tossing and turning and moaning a little. Oh, dear me. I suppose I didn't use quite enough of the sleeping draft. I didn't want to risk too much till I found out how well she tolerated it. Oh, yes, quite right, dear. You remember, it did make the Elliot girl very sick. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Oh, well, then I suppose we'll just have to use the gas. Will you walk into my parlor, said a spider to a fly. It's the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. Well, we all know what happened to the trusting fly. But Kathy, what is in store for her? I'll return shortly with Act Two. Jason and Sarah Warlock were born, brought up, and married in Brooklyn Heights. Their home, a leftover gem in an overgrown city. At the end of a quiet, dead-end street. No neighbors save small manufacturers and warehouses on the street. For the Warlock house was originally a stable. A quiet place for quiet people who lived a quiet life. Unsuspected 
and unholy. <sighs> Is she all right? Fine. Sound asleep. Had better close the window now. The gas is all gone. Yes, Jason. It's closed. Put the rubber tourniquet on her arm now. There. <laughs> Not too tight. Oh, I wouldn't hurt her for the world. This is the only part I never feel quite right about. Now, she won't feel a thing. And think of how much she's going to do for so many of our finest. Our youth and strength and vitality is going to spread among our faithful. Oh. Hush, hush, little one. That's all. By tomorrow, you'll never know what our coven owes you and will owe you in the vast unwinding of eternity. Sleep well, pretty. Sarah. Yes, Jason. If she's all she seems to be... She may turn the key in the door for all of us for everlasting life. Breakfast just about ready, Jason. How were the tests? Where is our Vestal Virgin? Still asleep. Then then the tests were... As pure as any alchemist can devise. Oh. I've already added what was needed to the mash and started the distillery. <laughs> this will be the most powerful batch of Pan Pharmacon Vitae I have ever concocted. You should raise the price. Oh, hush, woman. This is the devil's work. Would he or I seek to profit by it? Scrambled or straight up? Scrambled this morning. With perhaps just a lacing of the elixir. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's coming downstairs. Yeah, you're right. Uh, put some more eggs on for her. She may feel the need of a little extra protein this morning. Ah, hmm. I'll serve the juice. Well, good morning, Kathy. Sleep well? Oh, yes, Mr. Warlock. Except for... For what, dear? It's silly. Somewhere in the middle of the night, I thought I felt a pain in my arm as if something had bitten me. Oh, let me see. Oh, yes. There is a little bit of a mark there. Well, there's nothing to worry about. Sometimes the wind blows a Jersey mosquito away. I'll fix that in no time. Oh, please don't worry, Mr. Warlock. No, 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 no. I want your stay here to be a completely happy one. And please, not Mr. Warlock. Can't we make it, uh, say, Uncle Jason? And Aunt Sarah. I mean, we really feel, Mother and I, that we're virtually blood relations already. <laughs> of course, if you want. No, no, only if you want. Of course I do. You're both the sweetest people I know. Uncle Jason and Aunt Sarah. Ah, uh, now that's settled, Kathy. And how do you like your eggs? Oh, just any way that you want. Any other morning, but today is special. Then... Can I have them fried and once over lightly? Yeah, now how about some orange juice? I'd love it. But let me tend to myself. I know you're busy already this morning, Uncle Jason. What? Well, I see from my window that the chimney is smoking away. What wonderful thing are you creating this morning? Uh, oh, just some horseshoes for a stable near Prospect Park. Well, don't let me keep you. Why, child, I just came in to have breakfast myself. We'll all have it together. Good. Then right after breakfast, I'll come over to the forge and start helping get things in order. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, but you see, I, I, I think that this morning I'm so busy with the, uh, the forge and so on. Uh, why don't you take today off and go over to New York and start hunting for that job you hope to find? But I promised I'd get you straightened out. Oh. Oh, my goodness, I forgot. Forgot what, dear? In all the excitement, I, I forgot I have a luncheon appointment and I can't cancel it. Uh, about a job? Oh, no. It's just an old, old friend of my mother's. You know, I, I wrote him after she died to tell him. Just like I wrote all the people in her address book. And then when I came to New York, I called him at his office, but he was out of town. I suppose his secretary must have given him the message. Because she called me back with a lunch invitation for today. You want to cancel it? I can't. His office is closed on Mondays. So I have no way of reaching him. And I'd hate to put the old gentleman out. A uh, 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 old gentleman? Well, he's... I mean, he was once a beau of my mother's. And then when she married Dad, he moved to New York. He was quite old even then, I guess. Oh, well, then it's all settled. You can whisk off to New York in the subway, Kathy. 
And I'll get after this old reprobate here to get his papers together so you can put them in order. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to have Jason put up a screen on your window, just in case any of those mosquitoes come your way again. Oh, I don't want to be a bother. Bother? My dear little girl, you don't know how happy we are to have you with us. Yes, mademoiselle. May I help you? Yes, I, I'm having lunch with a Mr. Patrick Trent. I, I don't know if he's here yet. Uh, no, not yet. But uh, let me take you to his table. Uh, this way, mademoiselle. Henri, a chair for the lady. Oh, thank you. Oh, pardon, mademoiselle. Monsieur Trent just arrived. That's Mr. Trent? Uh, yes. Excuse me? Uh, Miss Pryor? Yes, Mr... Mr. Patrick Trent? Junior. Well, I guess not that anymore. My father died in Florida four days ago. Oh. I just came back from his funeral. Oh, I'm so sorry. What can I say? Oh, please don't. Mind if I sit? Of course not. Dad was... He knew it was coming. Not so soon, of course. And he... Well, he wasn't all that young. But he was meticulous about everything. And he told me he had this appointment with you. So I'm trying to fulfill all his promises and round things off. Uh, can I order us a drink before lunch? Oh, I... I, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm not a drinker. I, I wouldn't know what to order. Well, why not leave that to me? I'll take it easy. But we really ought to celebrate. Or at least me. You know, uh, in a period of absolute despair, suddenly uh, you were there, one bright, shining light through the murk. <laughs> so, in the lowest period of my life, I walk into my father's favorite restaurant, and instead of a nice, aging old lady, I find you. <laughs> well, I was looking for a nice, kindly old father figure. Sorry, I can't fill the bill. Well, that's all right. I found another one. Who? Oh, that isn't important for the moment. You know, I feel a little woozy. Shouldn't we order something to eat? Sarah, hey. What are you doing here? You scared me. <laughs> How's our life force coming? Uh, never better. Forge still burning outside? Oh, yes. Have to watch that. It's our excuse for this other and more important work of ours. Oh, of course, Father dear. You know I don't like you coming through the secret door by daytime. What is it? I've had quite a few calls. The Bronx, Queens, and Masketh can recycle bottles for us if we pick them up. Oh, and you better stop by Mrs. Ferngrass right here in Columbia Heights. Fine. I can leave this cooking for the rest of the day and take the panel truck to pick them up. We need them. Uh, did our little pigeon and our Kathy come back? No, not yet. Why? Are you worried? Oh, no, not worried. Concerned. Purest blood we ever had. Oh, I wouldn't want to lose her for any reason whatsoever. So, now you've seen the lady herself, the Statue of Liberty. Feel it more unfettered and free? <laughs> I guess I would, if I didn't feel so guilty. Well, what do you have to feel guilty about? Well, I should have been looking for a job. Well, you told me you kind of have one. Oh, that's just part-time. And also, I... Yeah? Well, I feel a little woozy from whatever you talked me into drinking before lunch. A daiquiri? Well, then we just had a bottle of beer. You know, I think I'm a little half seasick. No, couldn't be. We're just coming into the slip. So it has to be nothing. Or all. What did you mean there on the boat? Or all? Oh, it's just a feeling I have about us. Come on. Let's get the subway for Brooklyn. You don't have to take me home. I can manage. I know, but I have to go to work. I'm not a lawyer like my dad. Just a reporter. Lowly police precinct duty at that. Come on. We both have to get off at the same station. Uh, Clark Street, right? Well, that's my stop. But for you? Before I get there, I get your phone number and address, I hope. 
for future reference. Then I go to work. Hey, Pat. What do you say, boy? How's the world treating you? Oh, great, Sergeant. I just met a girl. Do they make them anymore? I thought they threw away the old mold when they created mess. You better believe this one is no mess. She's miss all the way, Jim. Well, she sure seems to made a hit with you. Oh, bullseye. I'm kind of late, sir. So before I have my editor on my tail, what's new on the blotter? Well, you didn't miss a thing. Just the usual. Woman receiving obscene phone calls, three minor muggings. Nobody hurt, thank heavens. An old booze hound overdid it and kicked off from alcohol poisoning. All the run-of-the-mill stuff, not worth a slug of type. Oh, uh, uh, just one, uh, social note, you might say. What's that, Sarge? I'm not a sergeant anymore, buddy. You're talking to a lieutenant. Hey, Jim, that's great. Now, we got to find you a headline case to bust wide open. <laughs> that the last case? Yeah. It's not even half full. Did you go by Mrs. Ferngrass? Right on by. Hmm? There were cops and an ambulance there. One of the neighbors told me they found her dead. Oh, the poor old thing. She must not have been taking the elixir. Hmm. Well, the devil take her. He must have wanted her home. Oh, yes. <sighs> I sure wish I'd gotten the bottles first, though. We're getting awful low. It's a shame how careless people are. So are we. What? You left the door open and Kathy's caught us. I hope I'm not butting in. There was no one in the house, so I... Oh, no, no, that's all right, Kathy. No secrets here. I never realized you had a room behind the fort. Oh, what lovely old bottles. What are they for? Oh, they, uh, uh, they, they're just decorative. Uh, yes, yes, yes. For, for windows and bottle glass door panels. Mm-hmm. What a wonderful idea. And what's that thing that's bubbling away there? Oh, that, uh, well, that makes the grout, you see. Uh, you know, the cement that holds the bottles together after they're cut. Well, how do you cut them? <laughs> that's my secret. How was your day and your lunch? Now, now, Jason, that's Kathy's secret. Well, I was just interested, that's all. <laughs> and why shouldn't you know? I'm dying to tell you about it. Oh, why don't you go in the house and freshen up for dinner? We'll be having it soon. And you can tell us all about it then. All right. But someday soon, I want to watch you making one of those windows. You think Kathy suspected anything? I doubt it. I hope not. I hope not, too. But if she does, she'll have to go. Just like Vera Blythe. You know that, dear. I know. Satan's work must be done. Mm. And nothing or no one can stand in the way. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. The ingredients are gathered and the witch's broth is fermenting. Pan Pharmacon Vitae, the elixir of life. They all believe they must drink. Has Kathy learned too much to be safe? And who is there to protect her if she has? I'll return shortly with Act Three. There is nothing more inexplicable than an obsession. Otherwise charming and sensible people can do the most outlandish things in the name of some irrational belief. And the terrible danger of witchcraft is that it is a hidden belief, secret and unknown. In their wildest dreams, no one who knew that dear old couple, the warlocks, could have suspected the havoc they are capable of. Least of all, Kathy, as she prattles away about her day in town with her newfound aunt and uncle, now, you're sure you won't have some more cherry cobbler, Kathy? Oh, no, thanks. It was yummy, but I couldn't hold another thing. Tell me, dear, are you going to see this young man of yours again? I don't know. He... He did take my address and phone number before he went to the police station. What? Uh, the police station? Yes. He's a reporter for the Brooklyn Journal. Oh. I, uh... I would be a little careful of those reporters. They're a wild lot, they say. Oh, not Pat. He's very kind and, and quiet and thoughtful. Uh, still, 
ones that work the police be, get pretty hardened by the things they see. Yes. I'd be very careful about a young fellow like that. Why, you two dears. You're protecting me like I was your own flesh and blood. Well, so you are. Now we got you. Girl? I couldn't wait to show off your new office, huh, Lieutenant? That what you had to call me? Forget it, Pat. This is strictly business. I have a story for you. I'd like you to get it on the front page of tomorrow's paper. Oh, oh Brother Jim, you're not asking much. I don't think I can beat the deadline. Uh, let me it... talk first. Ever see anything like this? Uh, no. Old-fashioned bottle. Strange shape. Read the label. Panpharmacon Vitae. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you got the college education, Pat. You tell me. Well, it's, uh, it's a gobbledygook. I mean, it's part half-baked uh, Greek, half-Latin, roughly, oh, I guess you'd say all the medicine of life. Or like maybe um, all the drugs you need to sustain life. What is it, some kind of patent medicine? Unlicensed. I sent the rest of the bottles to food and drug to have them analyzed. But meantime, all I need is my nose to tell me what it's mostly made of. Oh. Smell it. Phew, smokes, right, Jim? Loaded with wood alcohol, I guess. Alcohol, anyways. Well, uh, where'd you get this? Remember I mentioned earlier today some old booze hound got knocked off from alcohol poisoning? Uh, no, not particularly. Oh, yeah, 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 I guess. Well, she was poisoned, all right. But she wasn't any booze hound. When we followed up on the story, we found she was a Mrs. Ferngrass, local librarian, very well respected, but very quiet and kept very much to herself. Now, we found a whole case of this gook, most of the bottles empty. Now, some lousy con talked an old lady afraid of dying into buying her own death. And I want him. Now, how do I help? First of all, get me a story in the papers so anyone else who has this stuff doesn't also knock themselves off. Build it up so maybe we can get someone who bought it to tell why, how, and where. There's no instruction on this label. It's homemade. Now, whoever makes or sells this stuff is a ghoul. Paper come, sir? Just brought it in. Here you are, dearie. Thank you, sweetheart. Eh? By God. Jason, you're swearing. Never mind that. Come out to the forge with me. But I'm getting breakfast and coffee. Do as I say. Done. Come on. Yes, yes, but Jason, I never heard you. Don't talk. Just follow me. Morning, Aunt Sarah, Uncle Jason. They're gone. Uncle Jason? He must be out in the forge. <gasps> Maybe it's for me. Hello? Jenny? Yes? Pat? True Blue. Oh, I, well, I thought you weren't going to call me when you... Well, when you didn't call last night. Oh, I'm sorry. I got tied up with a, a big story. But forget that for the moment. When do I see you again? Tonight? Oh, yes. Matter of fact... How'd you like to come and meet these two gorgeous old people who are taking such good care of me? No wonder the police were at Mrs. Fernglass's yesterday. Oh, poor old thing. If she had only been taking the pan pharmacon. Yeah, she took too much. You know, I always warn everyone against that. Mm. Now, this, this witch hunt is on. I may have to get rid of all the bottles I filled. But why, dear? We're not doing any wrong. Yeah, we know that. But the rest of, of them, they, outside, the unbelievers, they want to persecute us. But how can they find us? Nobody in the coven will come forward. No, but Kathy might. It's a chance we can't afford to take. She's got to disappear. Oh, Oh, do we have to, Jason, darling? She doesn't have to see the paper. Well, it's on every newsstand with that big headline. How can she miss it? Well, we just have to keep her home. Uh, it's dangerous. I'd have to be sure there was some way she'd never get wind of this story. What are you doing here, Jason? I had to come, Dr. Callius. I have a problem. I can't fit you in today. I'm whooped solidly. Not a psychiatric problem. This affects you directly as high priest of the coven. There's somebody I'm afraid will have to be removed. Oh, I 
don't see how it could... How it could happen so suddenly. Hit me right after breakfast. No, no, dear. Just let me make you comfortable oh, in bed. And... I want to... I want to see a doctor. Oh, shush, baby. Oh. Jason has gone to see about one for you right oh. now. You just try to drink this nice medicine I oh. made for you. It'll settle your stomach. All right, Jason. That will do the job, all right. Just inject it in the vein. If you feel it has to be done. I don't want to hurt the poor child... Besides, she was such a perfect subject. But we must protect the coven at all times. By Astaroth, yes. But how can you dispose of the... Uh... The body? Oh, for a smithy, that doesn't present any problems. Or a witch. Isn't cremation what we all want afterwards? <laughs> Jason? Yeah, it's me. Where's the girl? Upstairs, sound asleep. I gave her something in this glass as well as the small dose of arsenic. When the young man calls, we'll tell him she suddenly left. And if he doesn't believe us? Well, what can he do? We open no doors and he can't break his way in. Now, as soon as it's dark, I'll do what has to be done. And by midnight, there'll be nothing left of our poor little girl but ashes. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, dear. Pat Trent speaking. Who? Oh, yeah. Put her on. Hi, Kathy. What? The story? Oh, look, I told you I... All right. It was just an old lady who was buying some kind of phony patent medicine that killed her. It was loaded with alcohol and... Had... Huh? What shape was the bottle? Well, it was... Old-fashioned, sort of octagonal and... What? Look, honey, I'm at work. I, I can't just walk out and... No. No, wait a minute, Kathy. Wait a minute. Kathy? Kathy? Damn. Is she crazy or something? Kathy's still asleep? Yes. Uh, I, I'd better answer that. Hello? Oh, yes, Miss Dredd. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, but... Kathy walked out on us this morning. No, 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 she's gone. No forwarding address. Well, I'm sorry. I, I really don't want to discuss it. She left without paying her rent. Jim, you've got to help me. You say you went to the house and no one asked. Yeah, but I am sure someone was there. Jim, this kid's in danger. Well, what can I do, Pat? I can't enter a search without a warrant. So how do we get one? I don't know. Wait a minute. You want to square out a complaint against Kathy Pryor? For what? Stealing your wallet will do. Oh, if that will get us in, you got it. Open up. This is the police. Open up or we're coming in. Oh, dear me. What is it? I'm looking for Kathy Pryor. Charge robbery. Oh, she's not here. She left. I have a search warrant here. Open up and I'll decide for myself. Police, help! Okay, that does it. Open up or do you want me to kick the door in? It was all just too much. I never get sick or sleep that heavy. I couldn't face that last drink, so I poured it down the sink and just lay there pretending to be asleep. Lying there, a lot of little funny things started to add up. And then, when I heard what they planned... Hey, take it easy, Kathy. You're okay from here in. But I thought they were so sweet. But they're ghouls. Absolute ghouls. You're right, Miss Pryor. But they don't think so. They think they're right. But don't worry. We have enough on them and the doctor to put them away for a long time. They confessed? 
We bore down a bit on the old man, and the old lady came to his defense like a tiger. Mm -hmm. She blurted enough of it out for us to get the rest. But what's the matter with them? They're witches, Miss Pryor. And in their world, that means they're good. That's the way they feel. I'll tell you how I feel. To hell with them. To which I can only add... From ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night, good Lord, deliver us. As he did, Kathy Fryer. I'll be back shortly. State Farm is there with a discount for drivers 50 and older. Millions of drivers 50 and older are saving important money with a State Farm discount. They're getting the personal agent service and great claims handling State Farm is famous for. And saving, too. If you're 50 or older with no unmarried drivers under 25 living at home, be a State Farm agent now. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The discount's not available in every state. Other restrictions apply. If you have not yet prepared your will, please listen carefully. Without a will, the laws of the state and not you will determine who receives your property and in what amounts. Who manages the affairs of your estate? Your choice as guardian of your minor children may never be known. Your loved ones could face unnecessary legal costs and needless court delays. Now, for only $12.95, you can make your own will quickly and safely with the American Will Kit. You'll receive simple fill-in-the-blank will forms with easy-to-follow directions. The forms were prepared by lawyers to be valid in all 50 states. Order now, and you'll also receive, free of charge, our easy-reading personal protection guide, giving you important tips and special information that can save you money. Now is the time to take advantage of this special mail order opportunity. To order, call toll-free 1-800-542-1212. Only $12.95 plus shipping. That's 1-800-542-1212. Money back if not satisfied. Call now, 1-800-542-1212. Sarah and Jason were put away for life. And all existing bottles of Panpharmacon Vitae were located and destroyed, and the coven dispersed. Incidentally, the analysis by the FDA confirmed a small quantity of blood in each bottle. Human blood. And, of course, alcohol. Other ingredients defied analysis. Kathy, who married Pat, sleeps deeper but more tranquilly these nights. The coven was broken up, but it's only one of many. And witches are still abroad. Always be on your guard. Our cast included Virginia Payne, Robert Dryden, Jada Rowland, Marshall Borden, and Dan Ako. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. <laughs> I've been teaching math here for 16 years. And you know what I expect of my students? Everything. You want to stay in my class, you show up every day. And do your homework every night. Like logarithms, calculus. You've got to know your stuff better than anyone else. Think it's tough? Next to real life, it's a picnic. The world doesn't want to hear excuses about why you failed. Neither do I. I only push them so hard because I promised them that if they paid their dues, did all their work, then they'd get to go to college and make something of themselves. Now, now please, don't make a liar out of me. Support the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>